Hi. Hi. Uh, today I'm with Mum Taz and uh, from my production limited, a, a new distribution arm for mm -hmm. independent filmmakers. Great to have you come and speak to Britflix. Great to be here, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your distribution company? Absolutely. So I run a distribution arm called My Spotlight Independent. It was a platform created for those films that have never been seen before, for struggling filmmakers that just can't seem to get that distribution deal. Um, me being a struggling filmmaker myself um, was so frustrated that my films are always getting rejected because the film has no named artists in it or it wasn't a major studio production. So I thought to myself, wouldn't it be a great idea to set up a platform and get those films out there on major platforms like Amazon Prime? Um, because I've got the ability to do that. I've got a technical background uh, working for post-production houses all my life. Um, so I've kind of got the experience and knowledge to be able to deliver films to Amazon. So I have now opened a door for a lot of filmmakers that could never get their stuff out there onto this kind of independent platform. And it's a bit of a unique platform really because um, we don't charge the filmmaker anything. We don't recoup costs back. We don't charge for any marketing. It's just a revenue share kind of platform and it's doing really well at the moment. Other distributors want to do business with me now as well, not just independent people, which is great. So I'm even expanding to work with other partners and it's just so exciting. So that's kind of what the company's doing at the moment the most, the distribution side. How many films have you got on Amazon at the moment? Um, there's about 300 at the moment um, and we've still got about a thousand more titles to put up. So we're working very fast and hard <laughs> to get all this content up there because um, it's it's rapidly growing, which is amazing. So it just goes to show that there is so much content out there that's just not being seen because of people that just constantly want, you know, big stuff. <laughs> what, um, what sort of films are you looking to attract? Um, we take a variety of films at the moment. We're not kind of narrow-minded we're inclusive we're inclusive of all work and um, experiences and quality obviously films have to be at a certain standard to get on a major platform like Amazon um, but if we genuinely think the film meets that requirement and it's a good story and it's got a great trailer and the film's acceptable quality then why not put it up there because it's someone's hard work that you know and I understand that as a filmmaker it's not easy to make a film so if we can get it up there for them then of course we would and um, so we open to a wide variety of genres um, particularly horror because I do love horror myself <laughs> um, and the thrillers so there is yeah I mean but we, we've got all sorts we've got documentaries we've got music videos we've got clips we've got all sorts anything we can get up there for them you know we we make an effort and make that happen for them so a filmmaker's interested in contacting you what, what is the first thing they should do um so we've got an acquisitions team um and on our website, there's an email address, acquisitions at myproduction.co.uk. You can email a submission via that email address. You can send us a link to the film, like a private screening link or a trailer or a synopsis, and we'll review it and see if it's something that we can take on. Um, so that's as simple as that, really. You haven't got to go through a recognised agency or anything. You know, we, we make sure we look at everything that comes in. And how did you actually become involved in film in the first place? Oh, um... I used to get my friends together when I was about six years old. I used to nick my dad's camera from his cupboard and just get friends together and make like horror films like Freddy Krueger's. I used to love the Freddy Krueger's. Unfortunately, I used to watch the horrors when I was a kid. Um, so it all kind of started from there, really. Um, and I've always loved it. I've always loved making films. And obviously now the distribution side has come of it. So it's all connected. And that's how it all kind of started. And you've made a few films yourself. Yes, I've made uh, seven feature films. Um, I wrote, uh, written, produced and directed by myself and edited by myself. But mainly because I had no money to pay everyone, so I kind of forced myself to do it as, you know, as much as I can myself. Um, I've learnt a lot from that, you know. Um, you know, it's, that's another reason why it's good that I feel uh, this platform's been set up, because I kind of understand everything in terms of making a film from start to finish and also getting it distributed. Um, it's a lot of work, so I completely respect other people that have done it, um, and I know what it's like, and I know there's loads of other people out there, you know, directing, writing, producing, editing, and <clears throat> absolutely, if you can do it, I would recommend that, because um, it is hard to get the money to get people to do things nowadays. Um, can, 
can, can a, a filmmaker who, who gets a film distributed by you put on Amazon Prime, etc., can they expect a reasonable <clears throat> return or yeah. can it be used to raise finance for their next feature? Or, you know, or... Yeah, absolutely. Um, every film is different. It's always hard. That The big question I get is how much roughly does the film make of my sort? Um, and that's really hard to always give honest feedback. But what I can do is show them other titles that, have, that are maybe similar to theirs and kind of show them figures. But you can make a regular income from a good feature film that's got great artwork, a great trailer, because let's be fair, when people want to watch the film, they'll have a quick look at the trailer, and if it looks any good, they'll probably play it. Um, but some films that we've thought will do really well just don't. And it's sometimes it's not to do with the marketing, it's not to do with the trailer, it's just sometimes it's a moment in time. Some films in, uh, shoot up in revenue randomly over Christmas. Sometimes they die down over the summer and then they shoot up again one month. So it's, it's really hard to say. But I guess to answer the question is, there's definitely a good possibility that they can make money um, and get their stuff seen. And are they tied into you? Is it an exclusive deal that they're tied in with you? Or? Uh, Non-exclusive. Um, I never tie them down. Um, that's another benefit with us, actually. You just reminded me. Um, they, they, the filmmaker can cancel at any time with just 90 days notice. Um, most other distributors tie you down for like a standard seven year deal or five year deal. Um, and not to forget that they'll probably charge you for any middleman costs, marketing costs, post-production deliverable costs. We don't do any, we don't charge for any of that. Um, so yeah, and if they wanna distribute with us, if they're not happy for any reason, they're completely free to walk away. We won't charge them for anything that, any costs that we would have incur incurred or anything. Um, so yeah, there's no tie down or anything like that. It's, um, I mean, how, how long has the company been going? So we started it in 2004, and I believe in 2008, we became officially a registered limited company. So. Since 2008, we've been an operating company, and only in the last three years, it's really started to take off since I've opened this new Spotlight Independent Division to My Production Limited. And do you think there is a future for independent filmmakers out there, or do you think the, the market's so saturated and the you know the, the big distribu distribution companies have just got it all sewed up? I mean, um, how, how I, do you see being an independent filmmaker today? I mean, I think it's definitely a, an advantage because the whole VOD that's come out now is giving a lot of independent filmmakers to get their, st their own stuff out there directly. And a lot of people can sell their own content now, which I think is brilliant. And I do think it's having a bit of an impact on the major studios. Um, but maybe that's a good thing because it's now time for us to shine and not always watch the high budgeted stuff all the time because, let's face it, there is loads of stuff out there that's brilliant. I mean, I get so many amazing submissions every month of some incredible films that have won several awards at s several film festivals, but they just still haven't even got on a platform like Amazon or even Vimeo where it's a self-distributing platform. Even filmmakers themselves don't want to, some, for, for some reason, distribute their own stuff when they can. Um, so I see a very good time for independent filmmakers, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of like an outlet for companies, sorry, for, for individuals that don't want to maybe do it themselves. You know, go to a restaurant, you know, we can all cook, or most of us can cook, um, but sometimes you still go out and pay for a meal, don't you? So it's that kind of thing that, that we do. We, if someone don't want to do it, we can do it. And some people can do it if they want. So that's the advantage of us, really. And if I come along, come along to you with, with my feature film, uh, and you like it, you're happy to take it on, how long would it be before I could expect to see it on Amazon? Uh, normally within two weeks, providing it all passes the checks, because um, we do our own internal checks, we understand the Amazon workflow and their specifications, uh, so we know what's required. Normally a lot of films that come to us, they might have like a website address at the end of the credits, and that's not quite allowed on Amazon, you can't put direct link to URLs, so we'll have to liaise with the filmmaker to either remove them or we can remove it, and we, we do that as well. So we'll look at all of that um, and advise, and then if it all goes through fine, yeah, within two weeks it should all go live. And also, uh, I believe that if you put a film on Amazon, it's got to have subtitles, is that right? Or uh, It's got to have captions, actually. So for the hard of hearing, it's like a requirement, um, which is great, because it maximises exposure of the film to other people who might not mind the, the, the hearing impaired. Um, you've absolutely within their right to watch a film and you know if they're going to pay they need to see the captions as well and i think it's great so that's a major requirement from and amazon can and you take care of that we can do that as well yeah we do all of that we don't charge the filmmaker the costs for that 
Um, some filmmakers already have the captions, which obviously makes our life easier. So that's great. That's always welcome. But if not, it's not a problem at all. We can cover that. So if I've just got a film, nothing mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. I, I go to you. What, what, what else would you need, need for me as a filmmaker? So ideally a trailer, um, which we can cut if you haven't got one, or select a preferred clip from the film. Um, I always think it's important to have a clip at least available for someone to watch before they choose to watch the film. I think that that's proven that from the from the, um, the stats and the metrics report, trailers are viewed a lot. So it's quite important that the trailer is associated with the film. So we make sure we extract that if you haven't got one. If you haven't got the captions, we'll send the film to this captioning house to do a um, well to create the captions. Oh, and of course the artwork. If you haven't got any artwork. We will. We also got a designer that does the artwork from scratch. If you've got any stills, we'll ask you to give us stills. If you haven't, then we can export stills from the film, just to create the pack shot for Amazon um, in the various formats that they need it. Does it help if you've been in film festivals? Um, what the f uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it always gives it exposure. Um, I can be a little bit sceptical of film festivals <laughs> only because the whole point of film festival is to one try and sell it obviously and if you've already got a deal in place that can get it on a major platform then you should just go with it you know I'm, I'm not saying completely avoid film festivals but if you get into the major film festivals like Cannes, of course go for that because you can get some big buyers but for someone sometimes these small independent ones you can just waste time going round and round in circles and winning awards, winning awards, but nothing really ever happens. But if you've already got a deal in space, do you, then... do you think it would help? You know, so if you've been, uh, you know, I mean, for instance, our film has been in the Glasgow Film Festival, East End Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Would that be help to be a selling point? Would someone watching on like Amazon think, oh, I might oh yeah, it because absolutely. it's got into sort of one of them festivals? Absolutely. I, I do think having laurels and you know award-winning film, I think that definitely does help. It automatically you know, it does make the customer think, oh, this must be a good film, you know, it's won an award. I don't think that's necessarily true. I've seen films that won awards, but for me, it wasn't something that I thought was amazing. So it's, 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 you can't please everyone with these things, but I do think it definitely helps. Unfortunately, I think a lot of us are trained to seeing a big laurel on a poster, think, oh, it's going to be a great film because it's won an award. But I don't, so I don't think that's necessarily always the case. But that's just me. I mean, someone might disagree with me completely. But I mean, there's, there's constant, sorry, we get loads of films that come in that have won all sorts of awards, but they've just not been distributed anywhere, haven't made it anywhere, and it's just so sad to see. So that's why I've got some kind of evidence there that, you know, maybe film festivals sometimes aren't always the best. So if you've got a deal in your face, like mine, <laughs> offering you an Amazon deal, and you're waiting a year to do the festival run, you could have made money in that whole year by the time you'd got it on the platform, you know, got it into all the film festivals or whatever, so. But of course, I mean, I, I do think if you've got a great film and it's brilliant quality and some major actors, you know, known actors in there, or you think you've got like a wicked hit or whatever, absolutely try the film festival circuit first, like the major ones, I'd say, to see if you can get that big deal. And I, and I would always advise my filmmakers to try and get that big deal, try and get that theatrical release, try and get the worldwide deals by major companies. But if you're just gonna end up getting a VOD deal, standard box standard video on demand deal then have a good think about it and just see where you stand with the contract and whether you can cancel at any time how much how much they're going to charge you from your royalties that you make but yeah if a major studio picks it up then always go for that but i'm kind of there in the background for those that are struggling who can't get it anywhere and what about um, like BBFC ratings? Does it need to be rated by the BBFC? Uh, thankfully, no, because it saves cost. Um, Amazon Prime give you the option to select uh, like a rating of your own. I know it sounds strange, but there is an in-house team at Amazon that will fail it if they think you've given it a wrong rating. So I think for VOD, it's a bit different. Um, but I do understand that a DVD being released in the UK, for example, it will by law have to be certified by the BBFC. That's, that's, that's really interesting because yeah. so if you bring out a DVD you've got to get it rated if it's which UK, is expensive yeah. as we found out <laughs> but if you go on VOD you don't have to get it um, I'm not 100% sure but I do know that Amazon won't you don't have to have a rating because right. it will get rejected so it's obviously legal <laughs> and I think it's because it's a US company their laws are a bit different with ratings so and how about so, so make, say you make a fairly extreme horror blood, sex, violence mm -hmm. how are Amazon are they picky on things like that? They are. If there's nudity involved, um, drug use, and it's like constant in the film, and it's clear that it's like in your face, they won't make it available for Amazon Prime, which means 
anyone on the subscription won't be able to watch it for free. They'll have to pay a certain amount of money to watch that film, so it won't make it to the prime. So normally I advise filmmakers if they've got sensitive content to either cut it down or we can offer to cut it down. There was a film called The Little Devil that we've been trying to make compliant for prime. Um, it's a great film and finally we managed to cut it, cut a lot of the nudity out and stuff like that and crop a lot of shots and we managed to get it on there um, on Amazon Prime which is gives it more exposure because people watch films want to watch films for free if they pay Amazon monthly to watch a film they're going to want to um, watch the free ones aren't they so that's why we tried to get that film specifically on there and we, we did it it was a bit of a battle but we got it um, so yeah, they are they they recognise they have a team that literally do watch it as well. So they've got their own in house team that know about the legal side as well. That obviously they watch out. So there's like a double barrier. There's me and then there's them. So it's. I mean, are they very strict or, do, or is that? They are quite strict. Yeah. If there's constant nudity in a film and it's uh, or drug use, then yeah, they'll just flag it and say this this can't go on Prime. You have to select the 18 rating, and then the customers have to pay to watch that title, which does unfortunately limit the revenue because that would that ever change you think i mean was that always because obviously I'm there's sure, probably actually, such yeah. a, a popular genre now and, and Bl uh, blood and gut seems to be fine that gets through fine it's just nudity and drugs so oh, okay. yeah well, i've seen some there's a lot of violent films on there that seem to be fine as a 16 plus um so i can't really answer exactly i'm not too sure on that field but it seems to get through fine when we submit it to amazon so and what territories can you expect to get a film on we can do guarantee. We can guarantee the U.S. market it doesn't include Canada or South America, or just the United States, uh, the U.K. and Germany slash Austria and Japan. So, if filmmakers have got a film already in Japanese or German, then we can do that, or we can offer the service to translate the film to German if they want to release it in German. But there are, there will be costs for that because it's quite a lot to pay a translator and do all that. But anything English-speaking territory-wise, like in the US and the UK, for example, then, yeah, we handle all of that. But hopefully in the future there is going to be a plan to expand. We are already looking at expanding to iTunes and a lot more platforms. But for now, we're just guaranteedly focused on Amazon. Um, and we are branching out as time goes on. Do Perth say 1,000 minutes viewed or 1,000 hours of viewed? Mm -hmm. Do you get paid more money for views in America than you do over the UK, for instance? Yeah, it kind of works out the same. I mean, in America, as an example, anything up to 100,000 minutes, sorry, for every 60 minutes streamed, it's 6p, sorry, 6 cents in America, um, up to 100,000 minutes, if that makes sense. Yeah. Anything above that, I believe, goes into another bracket, like 10 cents or something. Um, and in the UK, it's 4p, and then it goes up slowly, bit by bit. <laughs> So it does vary. And obviously, if it's on Amazon Prime, uh, if it's just on Amazon TVOD, where you've got a like, transactional video on demand, where they've got to pay to watch, then we automatically get 50%. Amazon keep the other 50. So if you've got a filmmaker coming to you, could they say, I don't want it on Prime, I don't want people watching it for free, mm -hmm. I want people to pay to watch it, can you provide that service as well? Yeah, we could do that as well. Purely up to the filmmaker. I wouldn't advise it because it's very clear from the reporting that Prime does make the most revenue, but that's totally their choice. If they think they're gonna make a lot of money on it because people wanna to pay to watch that film, then that's great because that well, will make well, more it's money. it's got lots of blood, sex, nudity, drug use. And exactly, yeah, another reason, yeah. Um, but I think it'd be quite nice. I mean, if a, if a film came out that was the next best thing and it was everywhere in the world, then it would be silly to put it on Prime because people will probably pay to watch it and you'll make a lot more of, of money instead of the 6p kind of revenue. Um, you'll get the 50% of the 4.99 price or whatever it is, which is a lot more. Do Prime uh, ever, or Amazon, do they ever, if there's a film that's doing particularly well, do they ever sort of try and buy it outright, like Netflix would buy, buy a film mm. or... I think once it's out there, they might not, because it's already had the views and been released. But <clears throat> perhaps if you approach them, because we can approach Amazon as well to say, we think this is a great title, this is going to do really well, you can pitch it to them. Um, but we haven't really done that. Well, actually, we have done that. We've got close to a few deals, but it's in the end, it's kind of got dropped. So we just stick with the Prime at the moment. And if it takes a hold on its own anyway, it's just it's good enough anyway, because they will see from their metrics that one title is doing really well, so they might not come into you for something. You know, it can happen. So, and do you get people actually? I mean, have you actually then got a channel on 
I don't know a lot about Prime. Mm -hmm. Have you actually got a channel on Prime, have you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got... Um, there is a URL link, I believe. Um, it's got Amazon.com slash V slash My Spotlight Independent. And that is our channel. It's just our actual films. And you can scroll through all of our genres, comedy, thriller, horror. Um, so, yeah, there is a channel on there. But to be honest, it kind of... You don't. It doesn't really look like a channel, though. When you're scrolling through Prime as a customer, it might just turn out that one of the titles might just come up. But then, if you watch that title, you might get that title recommended. Um, like that, there could, there could be another title that gets recommended just because you watched that one, for example, which is under my channel. So it's all kind of linked. If that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, you're you're obviously a very talented person. You know, yeah, you you. you you start as a filmmaker, you yeah. know, who, who uh, writes, directs, produces, edits, composes. You play the violin, <laughs> uh, the the, uh, the piano, yeah, uh, m multiple instruments. So you do your own soundtracks and stuff. Yeah. Um, do you still want to make films in the future? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm hoping the plan is to get this platform thriving, which it already is. I want to really make it bigger. I love it. I love doing it. Oh, and I want to be able to invest some of the money made from this into our own films and also other people's films. One day the big plan will be, I'd love to be able to say have 30 grand for, towards your feature film to someone. You know, if it's a film that I genuinely really love and it excites me, then I'm going to want to invest in that And because I can't be making films myself all my life. I want to be able to give other people a chance um, and I think this platform will help do that as it grows. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, obviously, I'll put fix up. I find making films and watching other people's films really exciting, and uh, it's it gives you such a buzz helping put other people's films out. Yeah, there absolutely. When, when they, Cause when they can't, they can't get out there themselves. I knew what it felt. I I know exactly how it feels because for years I've been trying to sell my stuff, send my trailers, gotten excited by one little response here and there, and then normally ends up nothing. You don't get replies. It, it just ends up. I don't know. I mean, I've learned a lot as well. I've sent some ridiculous submissions out from rubbish films and me thinking this is the best film ever. You know, I've, I've been there and I've done all that and, I, and there's things that I wish I didn't say and do, but you learn as you grow and I think that will make us who we are in the end. Um, and it's, so I, I understand that side of it. If someone comes to me and they make a bit of an error or an issue or annoy me, then I kind of think back to hang on. That's why I was like, I get it. It's all good, you know, so it's quite important that I've been there. I think that helps a lot. I didn't just come in as this is a distributor, not really knowing how the filmmakers have felt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there, there's some, uh, I mean, at, at the moment, I mean, I've, I've seen some really good films this year and I, I think the, certainly the British independent scene is in, is in a really good place. Yeah, no, absolutely. There's so many good British content out there. there um, I can't even think, I can't even start with the quantity or names, but there yeah. are just so many things that I see. Even from around the world, we're getting films from around the world, from the Netherlands. We've got a film from China, actually. We've got um, films from Germany, oh, um, Arabic films, all sorts. Like They're kind of starting to hear about us. Yeah. And other distributors want to do business with me now as well, not just independent people, which is great. So I'm even expanding to work with other partners and it's just so exciting. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to what the future will hold. <laughs> well, Taz, it's been really good to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I find it exciting and I'm hoping that you know we can uh, cooperate together in the future yeah, helping no, promote love British, to. British independent and general independent films. That's what we're about and yeah. let's, yeah. Absolutely. Let's do this. Great to <laughs> you. Thank you very Thanks much so for much. having me. <laughs> no, brilliant. Thank you.